Hey guys, welcome back to Monikero Custom Guitars. And this is the CNC Guitar Build Season 2, Episode 5. And today, as I said in the previous episode, I'm going to talk to you about the back profile of the neck and go through some of the tool pads. And I want to take this opportunity as well to answer a couple of questions that I had from the first episode. So let's roll the intro and we can begin. So what's special about the profile of the neck? This neck is going to have what they call an extreme progressive asymmetric neck. An asymmetric neck is when you have the base side of the neck thicker than the treble side of the neck. But in an extreme progressive profile, um, the neck at the first fret, uh, the base side is thicker than the treble side where further down the fretboard where well where the neck heel is the the treble side is much thicker than the bass side so yeah today i'll show you how i did that on fusion and go through the tool pads and show you the machining process so let's go to fusion hey guys welcome back to fusion 360 and the first thing that I want to cover is the couple of questions that I had from the first, um, from the previous episode. Um, the first question is from Chase WK Shop, and he says, well, actually, it's more of a request. Uh, in the future, could you go over the two sided machining setup for the CNC with the pins and fusion? I have attempted it before with my CNC, and it was off for some reason. Well, how I do this setup is very simple. First of all, this is uh, a model of my wasteboard, and this operation is the machining of the locating pins on the wasteboard. Now, I use the same um, operation to machine the holes on the neck blank, and that's the first step. And I want to mention something, that on Mac 3 I have different kind of profiles, if you're using my Mac 3 for example. Um, I have the first profile which is a general um, profile, which I have the 0, 0, well I have the home uh, point at this edge of the board. And when I'm machining a neck blank, I have a home point at a different area. I use the same profile to machine the holes on the wasteboard and the same profile and the same toolpad to machine the holes on the neck blank. Now, the second step for this operation is to have uh, the same location for the home point of your machine for both uh, sides. For example, here I have my neck. And if I'm going to machine uh, the thruster channel, I use, well, I made this point here. And this sits just above the probe, just above the neck. And I make sure that in my setup, this one, I make sure that the the origin, the home point or whatever of the machine, will be ex at that point. It might not be in the center of the material, but all I need is to have the home point at the center line of the neck, and that is very important. Now, when it comes to machine to flip the blank and machine from underneath, what I did. I can't use the same point because the ZX, Z axis will be all the way down. So what I did, I just projected the same design onto the back of the neck. Like so. And if you see it from the top, as you can see, it is the same point regarding the Y axis and the X axis. The only difference is the Z axis. 
and this is, I think, it might be the case where you are, where you're having some troubles. But this is the most important thing regarding this setup. To have all of the home points when you're machining at the same center line of the piece. And I use the same principle for the body blank. I have point at the back of the blank and I have the same uh, the same design on the top of the body blank and from the top view they're all the same point so yeah I hope that helps a lot and I really hope that you resolve your problems now for the second question from Mark Gutierrez He's asking me about how I modeled the heel transition on the back of the neck and also hoping you will cover the CAD cam for the radius of the fretboard. Now regarding the modeling of the heel transition, I will cover that later on in this video when I will talk about the profile of the neck. And regarding the fretboard, I will cover the cat now, quite easy, but the cam will be uh, for the race machining, the radius of the fretboard, it will be for the next episode. So let me show you how I modeled the radius of the fretboard, which is quite easy if you think about it. So first of all, um, I extruded, this is the profile of the fretboard on the neck and the neck and the next step is to model the fretboard as a separate body now the next step what i'll do is i draw this is on this uh, plane i'll draw a two point circle starting from the top of the fretboard going down having a radius of 20 inch and then I'll just make, I close this part, like so, and trim, uh, trim down all the rest of the circle. So I have this shape here. So what I do with this design is just press pull or extrude. And I'll just cut the rest of the material of the fretboard blank. And that basically how I model down the radius of the fretboard. Okay, now regarding the back profile of the neck. As I said, this is going to be featuring an extreme progressive asymmetric profile. How I model this kind of profile in Fusion, basically what I do is I create uh, these sketches. This is around the first fret and this is around the 23rd fret. Now, usually, um, with a normal profile of the neck, these will be an ellipse or an arc. And then I continue from there. But as I said, this is an asymmetric neck. And here you can see the difference between the two profiles. This is at the first fret, which you can see that the base side is much thicker than the treble side and at the end of the neck you can see that the treble side is much more thicker than the base side and to model this neck what I'll do is I take these two profiles and I just um, create a loft operation which you can find it this here create it's a loft picking two profiles and combine them in one and this creates the back of the neck now regarding the neck heel what i'll do is this is the pocket this is the drawing of the pocket of the neck now at this stage i haven't decided to go to extend underneath the pickup that's why it's kind of short but the concept 
and the modeling is basically the same. So what I do is just a matter of extruding this this design like so, and when in the options, it's important that you because usually if you if I go back and I extrude this profile. It will cut the it will cut the part where intersect with the blank with the neck blank. But if you go and make a join, for example, it will join with the remaining of the blank. And that's what basically I did to smooth out the back, the joint where the heel meets. Uh, the back of the neck, I just use a simple fillet operation. And at this point it's important not to overdo it because, for example, usually I'll go around 4 or 5 mil. And you can see it's quite subtle whether if you go, for example, extreme like 15, you can see it's nice as well, but you can see that the profile of the pocket of the neck is very much distorted whether if it's four it will keep the same if I turn on if I make it like so this is the drawing of the heel if I go with a 15 mil you can see that this edge it moved forward from the actual design so that's very important to keep that in mind now, for the extension of the neck, it was just a matter of drawing this um, this sketch, extruding it, so it creates another body, and then press pull the rest of the neck into that into that other body, join them, and then I extrude again this profile, but at that time. It's just a cut operation, and then I extruded the hose, and that's basically it. Okay, guys. So regarding uh, the two pads for the back profile, I like to do it in two passes. One, it's a clearing operation where I clear most of the material, and then I come with uh, a finish pass using a bull nose bit. Now, for the clearing operation, it's a parallel operation, and the tool pad is set up to go perpendicular to the length of the neck. And here, well, here I'm just removing most of the material, and I'm leaving, if I'm not mistaken, some material. Yes, I'm, le I'm leaving one mil on both radial and axial of material. So that after I can come with a this is a quarter inch yeah quarter inch ball nose bit, and I will remove everything and to have a nicer finish, I like to go in line with the length of the neck bank, and most important, the step over is you make it to the minimum as possible, so you'll have. Uh, and much nicer finish. Still, you're going to need to sand down most of the lines, but it's much better to leave it that way.
So guys, that's it for today. I hope you liked it, enjoyed it, and learned something from it. Again, if you have any more questions, please leave them down in the comment section down below, and I will do my best to answer them in the next episode. If you're new to this channel and you're enjoying what you see, please, I invite you to consider subscribing to my channel. I do guitar and CNC related content and hit that notification bell so you will be aware about my future releases if you guys like this video please hit that like button and share it with your friends or whoever is interested in something like this and until the next time take care and goodbye